Hello everyone, this is Namita Pasnotra and then this is my second video on topic ratios. So in this video, I will be solving some questions on the concept of ratio. So let's begin. So let's recapitulate what are ratios. If we compare two quantities in the terms of how many times, then this comparison is known as uh, the ratios. So let's uh, begin with question number five. This is of your NCRT book, exercise 12.1. So I'll read the question for you. It says that fill in the following blanks. So the blanks, uh, the question is like, I'll read the question for you. It is 15 upon 18, which equals to, now there is a blank in the numerator upon six, which equals to 10 uh, is in the numerator upon, uh, there's a blank at, uh, in the denominator and which is equal to again a blank and upon 30. And the, another thing that we have to, to write is whether these uh, e ratios are equivalent ratios. Now, one thing I want to tell you here is if the fractions are equivalent, then the ratios are also equivalent. And also we know that we can write the ratios uh, in the fraction form also. So let's begin solving this question. How we are going to solve now the first we'll go step by step so we have here 15 upon 18 and uh, now i have to find the common factors of 15 upon 18 to reduce it so is there anything common in 15 and 18 yes i can see they both are divisible by 3 so what will i do instead of writing 15 write uh, 15 no i will not write 15 instead of writing 15 i can write it in a different form i can write it as 5 3 is a 15 as they both are divisible are divisible by 3 and instead of writing 18 i would write 6 into 3 okay so now looking at it what do we see so we have the lowest form here which is 5 upon 6 right because the 3 gets cancelled from uh, 3 so the lowest form is 5 upon 6 now to know whether these this is the lowest form or not you have to look at it at 5 and 6 together and if you see that these are co-primes so that means these are or the both are prime numbers or these are co-primes then the these two numbers are in their lowest form so this means that 5 upon 6 is the lowest fraction right and then uh, now i go this is equal to now uh, there is a blank here upon six now we already have six with us and six is in the lowest form we have already figured this out so that means it's easy now i can write uh, the numerator as five and denominator as six that was easy now i have to write the lowest form here to figure out that what will be my answer in the denominator now so i simply write my five upon six and try to calculate what is given to me so i know that five how many times are ten yes five twos are ten so that means six twos are will be my answer so my answer here will be twelve right and that equals to again there is a blank here in the numerator doesn't matter i will try to break it in the uh, different way i will write my lowest form which is 5 upon 6 here right and i'm going to multiply to find out for a 6 how many times is 30 so i know that 6 5 is 30 so that means i have to write the equivalent fraction i have to multiply the numerator also by 5 you know now equivalent fraction means you have to multiply the numerator and denominator with the same number that the value doesn't changes doesn't change the value doesn't change right so now when i do that so my numerator value uh, i'll get is 5 into 5 that is 25 so this is so easy so with this we can see that uh, that 5 and then 12 and 25 are the numbers which come in the blank respectively so let's write the answers neatly may i do it that for you so it will be 15 upon 18 that equals to 5 upon 6 that equals to uh, this they all are equal right then 10 upon 12 and which is equal to 25 upon 30 so the next question is are these equivalent ratios so my question to you is are these equivalent fractions if the answer is yes then definitely they are also these are also equivalent ratios because when you write them in the form of ratios like if you if you write 15 upon 18 so this is equal to 5 is to 6 which is equal to 10 is to 12 and which is equal to 25 is to 30 so by writing like this i have taught you another way of solving ratios so if you get a question in, not in the form of a fraction but you get a question in the form of ratios so this is how you will be solving it interesting now 
So let's do the next question. It says find the ratios of the falling and uh, the A part says so I have taken only two parts of this uh, question. There are four parts. So remaining two you can do yourself and it says you have to find the ratio of 81 to 108. So as we have already learned that there are when we have to find the ratios of two numbers, there are three steps. OK, first one is you change the question into the fraction form. Second step is you will be reducing it. And the third step is that you will writing the final answer in the form of ratios. So fraction reduce ratio FRR. Now when I write when I have 81 to 108, I write it as a fraction. So 81 is a numerator and the second number that is 108 becomes a denominator. Now after that you have to now find, uh, reduce it. So there are two ways of reducing it when you reduce. OK, you have to reduce it to the lowest form. So when you have to reduce it to the lowest form, one is you can do it mentally. You all can do it, but there may be questions like this where you have 81 upon 108. So it may take uh, steps to do it or the best way is you can find the HCF here. So when you find the HCF, you can reduce both of them in the lowest form. So I try doing that and uh, we find the HCF. So three, right? You'll take all the prime factors, finding the highest common factor here. And uh, so it will come 27. And then again, three threes are nine. And then you have three six are 18. So we can go again, it can go by three right so three how many is a 27 yes you're right three nine is a 27 and i'll write a three one the three and three to the six i think so again we can reduce it by nine yes three threes are nine and then three fours are 12. now when you look at three and four these are co-primes that means now there is no common factor in three and four so what is the hcf of uh, these two numbers that is 3 into 3 into 3 which is equal to 27. Now this means that if I divide both the numbers by 27 I'll get the lowest form. So I write here 81 divided by 27 and I write here 108 divided by 27. What do I get? I get, <laughs> may I give you a trick here? Yes you will be getting these two numbers only. So just remember the order it will be 3 upon 4. OK, easy, no interesting. So this is my lowest form. So I can write 81 upon 108 is equal to 3 upon 4. And then remember, we have to write, I've done the second R now. I have to do the final R. Now the final R of the trick is that you have to write it in the form of ratios. So I'll write 3 is to 4 and that is my final answer. So let's do the C part. Now what does the C part say? The C part is 33 kilometers to 121 kilometers. So in that question there were three but otherwise there are four steps. One is the step one is you have to check the units and the, the units are different. Then you have to if they are not same then you have to convert these units. So you will check both the units and then convert and bring them same. Okay so that is my one added step here. And otherwise, you know the other three steps. That is, you will write write the question into the fraction form, then you'll reduce, and then write the ratios. Okay. So uh, let's look at the units now. The units are same. So good news. So we don't need this step here, right? So we begin with the next one. And when the units are same, after that you are anyway you have to ignore the units. So you will not be writing the units. So I write my question as 33 to 121 I write it as a fraction 33 upon 121 I try to find the HCF because I have to reduce it to the lowest form when I look at it and I want to I see this is going by 3 but when I add 2 plus 1 is 4 and 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4 so total is 4 here that means this 121 is not divisible by 3 but then I can definitely see that this is divisible by 11 so 11 this is 3 here and then can you tell me Yes, you're right. This is 11, 11s are 121. So my uh, after that, these two, 3 and 11 are co-primes. That means 11 HCF here is what, children? HCF here is 11 because it cannot be reduced further. So my, what will I do? I will now divide this by my HCF, the numerator and denominator. So the, and turn, you know, equivalent fraction concept. So you can divide it. So I'm dividing it by my HCF, which is 11. I can multiply a numerator and denominator by the same number. I can divide also by same number, equal and fractions concept. And after that, uh, when you write the answer, and I've already given a trick, it will become 3 upon 11. So this is my lowest term. So shall I leave it here? 
or is there a step left? Yes, there is a step left. That is the final answer. Final answer will be 3 is to 11. Easy. So that is your answer. I know ratio questions, everybody finds them very easy and interesting. And I'm sure you're ready now to do a question where even conversion of units is involved. So let's read question number seven. It says, find the ratio of the following. And the A part says 30 minutes to 1.5 hours. Now looking at it, I know minutes and hours means different units. And if these are different units means now my trick steps that I had given you, which were they, you remember? They were F, R, R. Now I will also have the unit step here that you convert the units, okay? Uh, so when I do that, I know that one R is equal to how many minutes? Tell me, 60 minutes, okay? So that means uh, now half an R will be how much? 0.5, that is R will be how much? So 0.5 of an R, that is 0.5 or half an R will be half of 60 minutes, that is 30 minutes. So there is no need to solve. You can add it. This becomes 1.5 hours and this becomes your 90 minutes. Now this is for those who find conversion difficult. So I've given you a new way. I know you can do it mentally. So my 1.5 hours is equal to 90 minutes. Now I will rewrite my question. So uh, let me just write. Uh, now it says, uh, let me just start it again after conversion. So it is 30 minutes to 1.5 hours, right? So uh, I will convert this and I'll write 30 minutes to 90 minutes. Right, super. So we have done this. My first step is done. Now I'll do my second step. That is I have to write the fractions. And when we write the fractions, do we write the units? So we don't know, we don't write the units. So I'll write 30 upon 90. After that, I have to reduce. Now, for this, we don't need HCF. We can just do it mentally. Can you see, children? So, you can reduce the 0 by 0, and we can clearly see 3 ones is 3, 3 is a 9. This can be done quickly. So, my final answer is 1 is to 3. Right? 1 upon 3, and then, yes, uh, ratio, so 1 is to 3. So, it will be 1 is to 3. That is my final answer. Simple. Now that I know you all are experts and you can do ratio questions just like this. So let's take up some statement sums. So this is question number eight and it says in a year Seema earns rupees 150,000 and saves rupees 50,000. Find the ratio of money that Seema earns to money that she saves. Now that is easy. Now can you see uh, money that she earns is also given and money that she saves is also given. So A part can be done without uh, anything but let me look at the B part also uh, it says money that she saves to money that she spends now money that she saves is given but money that she spends is not given so how we will do that we will first be finding money that she spends but before that I want to ask you you can say real life question where uh, you know uh, the adults in your family may be earning money and uh, or maybe you earning some money uh, it can be a pocket money also. And then I want to ask you, do you save the money that you earn or you just spend it all? I want the answers in the chat box. With that, we begin um, with this. So how do we do this? We will definitely be writing the statements and we begin by calculating the money that she spends by writing the first statement. That is money that uh, money earned by Seema. That is one like 50,000. Money saved by her is 50,000. And then money spent by her is one like 50,000 minus 50,000, which is equal to, yes, you're right. It is uh, equal to one lakh rupees. Now, after this, now I will be solving my A part. And what is the A part? That is money that Seema earns to money that she saves. So let's learn uh, how would we do that. We will write the statement first and the statement will be ratio of money earned to ratio of money saved. You have to copy the question and you have to be very careful with the order. We cannot change the order. Earns is first and saves is later, all right? So see, I've written earned and then she saved. Uh, money she saved and then I write it in the form of a fraction that is money earned upon money saved which is equal to and now you would uh, put the values here so I can see money earned is 1,50,000 and money saved is 50,000 
like this. Now you have to reduce it. It's easy. We don't need to find an HCF here because I can reduce it just like that. Okay, so you can uh, reduce it like this. Five ones are five and five threes are 15. So my answer will be three upon one. May I leave it like this? No, I have to write the final answer in the form of ratio. So I write three is to one. So that is my final answer. So the ratio is, can you understand what does this mean? This means that she is earning three times of what she is saving. So it gives a good idea, a clear idea, and we can compare it easily without even knowing the figures. So she can, you know, we uh, just uh, keep it in the mind loop. I'm uh, earning three times than what I save. So now we have to do the second part and let's read the second part together. And second part is here. It says money that she saves to money that she spends. And we have already taken out the value of money that she uh, spends. So let's uh, write it now in the form of a, uh, in the form of statements. So how will you do that? Yes, you'll write ratio of the money saved to money spent. And remember, order has to be same. And then I write it in the form of a fraction. So I write money saved upon money spent and then now I will be writing the values. So money saved is 50,000 rupees and money spent is one lakh. Now, when she wants to know what is happening, she wants to compare, right? So she's comparing, I'm reducing now all and bringing it to the lowest form. So five ones are five and five to the 10. I get my lowest form as one upon two and the final answer will be one is to two. That means she is, uh, uh, you know, spending twice as uh, the amount as she is saving it, you know. So this is how Seema can compare her spending, her earning and her savings. Interesting, no ratio is very interesting. And I'm sure you are going to apply this in your life. So thank you for watching. This is Namita Basnotra and definitely I'll be coming up with more videos on ratio and proportion. Keep watching.